Hey guys, it's John DeYoung and today we're going to talk about distal biceps rupture. Now a distal biceps rupture occurs when the tendon attaching the biceps muscle to the elbow is torn from the bone. Uh, this injury occurs mainly in middle-aged men uh, during heavy work, lifting, or a fall. Now a distal biceps rupture is rare compared to ruptures where the uh, top of the biceps connects to the shoulder. That's what I got right there, the proximal tendon one. Talk about the get that uh, Popeye bicep, okay? <laughs> but the distal one, that only occurs in about three to five people per 100,000 each year who tear a biceps tendon. Um, unfortunately, once torn off, the biceps tendon at the elbow will not grow back to the bone and heal. I think you probably know that already. <laughs> Other arm muscles will make it possible to bend the elbow fairly well, even without the biceps tendon, but however, they can't fulfill the functions of the elbow, especially the motion of rotating the forearm from going palm up to palm down. Uh, that's called supination, okay? Also, that kind of movement's really important for power gripping activities, okay? So that's why many doctors uh, really prefer to treat the uh, distal biceps tendon rupture with a uh, surgery. If you don't have the surgery, that often results in pretty significant loss of strength. Uh, flexion at the elbow is somewhat ex uh, affected, but the supination, like I said, uh, that's gravely affected. Uh, the strength of your supination without that, uh, that uh, distal biceps tendon is a loss of about 50% of strength. So that's pretty serious, okay? So to return your arm strength to the normal levels, uh, your surgeon may offer you surgery to repair the torn tendon. However, again, the non-surgical treatment uh, it's a reasonable option for patients who may not require full arm function uh, and also the ones who can't make time for rehab required after surgery. And that's kind of a bummer if you can't get off work. Uh, if uh, you know, you're the sole breadwinner, that's it's kind of a bummer. But anyway, um, so it's been reported that early repair performed at four weeks or less after the injury uh, was recommended. Uh, it was believed to prevent potential complications. Uh, poor outcomes due to tendon retraction, scarring, uh, and the need for more extensive dissection. But, however, those advantages of early repair have not really been clearly borne out in the literature, so don't feel pressured into a decision immediately, okay? Take your time. All right, but if you do choose surgery, uh, the rehab process is as follows. Uh, a sling will be provided to rest the elbow, but this should usually only be used for about uh, week one and week two after surgery. It's really to prevent long-term stiffness, okay? Now, physical therapy is obviously individualized to your specific needs, but usually progresses in this manner. Uh, weeks one and two, minimum post-operative stiffness with active finger and wrist and elbow movements. Uh, the next two to six weeks, uh, they're gonna aim to uh, progress to full range of motion as pain allows. In, in some instances, uh, when the repair is tight, again, because of retraction, the arm can take several weeks to straighten out um, while the repair heals. Uh, it's also important not to excessive, excessively force the arm to straighten during this period. Okay, now in the six to 12 week period uh, and beyond strengthening program, uh, once pain is, is starting to settle, they're gonna increase the strength, uh, strength uh, training for your elbow. Uh, it's gonna gradually return all the previous functions. Um, you can get back to recreational activities after about 12 weeks. Um, you know, other activities, you can drive in six weeks. Uh, you can go back to work in two weeks. Manual labor, 12 to 16 weeks. Golf, 16 weeks. Racket sports, around 16 weeks. But 16 weeks, but the contact sports, that's about six months, okay? Uh, some of the potentials and risks or complications. Obviously, with any operation, a small number of people may have some problems after distal biceps repair. Uh, most of these problems require minor, uh, are minor, and really uh, can be treated easily. Uh, the main risks are infection, about 1% of cases, bleeding and bruising, nerve injury. Now, the biceps tendon uh, sits close to the nerve that lifts your hand at the wrist, okay? So, obviously, during surgery, they take a very good care not to hit that nerve, but it can happen, okay? Uh, elbow stiffness as well. There is definitely a small risk that your elbow will not regain full movement. Um, also during surgery, possible fracture of the bones during the drilling procedure <laughs> uh, and re-rupture. 
the repair tendon may re-rupture. Uh, you know, it's important that you follow the instructions regarding protecting the repair uh, by using the sling and avoiding lifting while uh, the repair heals, okay? Um, and lastly, is distal biceps repair always successful? Uh, distal biceps repair leads to a sustained improvement in symptoms in 95% of the cases with very few complications overall. Uh, while these statistics are encouraged, encouraging the results obviously uh, are therefore not guaranteed and may be different for everybody else, okay? Um, you know, I tore my proximal tendon off the bone, so that's why I have that Popeye bicep. I tore it, here's my void right here, and obviously the distal biceps, it's, off, it's opposite, the, the bicep comes up because it's not attached at the elbow anymore. So I, myself, if that happened to me, if I had a distal biceps tendon tear, I would definitely have that surgically repaired, especially if you're, you know, under 70 years old, uh, you know, over 70, maybe not, but you're gonna need that tendon, <laughs> okay? So I hope this was helpful. Uh, and good luck, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thank you.